My name is Mike Ostrich, and I'm going to talk to you about the power of light. Now, light has a unique property. It can change the context of whatever scene you're trying to do. It can change the emotional context of what you're trying to film or take a photo of. It can change the temperature, make something feel warmer or cooler. Or it can make something look much more flattering than what you do with basic lighting. So I have here kind of a studio light setup right now. I have an antique light, which is simply just this, like, you know, an antique bulb and into a light stand facing right at me, blinding the crap out of me. And a ring light around my camera, just standing on a little pedestal. So I have two different directional lights facing at me. One giving me a skin color uh, tone and the other one just exposing me. Whereas my backlights here are just kind of creating accent lighting. But this is creating more of a professional studio feel. So what happens if I just do a flat feel? Okay, now I shut down most of my lights, except for the ring light, because that's the only real illumination I'm getting from the camera settings I have. But I have a dome light turned on. So now what's happening is that I have one major light source bombarding me only in one direction. And what's doing is that it's causing unflattering shadows. I've turned off my accent lighting, so you don't have any additional lighting that's being in the shot. So now it just kind of seems boring and uninteresting to a lot of people. But just having the little bit of accent lighting, just having the little antique light turned on and getting rid of that overhead light changes the dynamics of the film that I'm trying to make right now. So how does light direction affect someone's features, like your facial features or a product's features? So let me turn my lights back on and I'll show you. So when you take professional photography courses or go to uh, school to learn about photography or filmography, see a lot of times they tell you not to take a photo or a film of somebody in harsh sunlight, especially when it's up like high noon. Because what you're doing is you're creating unflattering shadows. So let's turn my little red LED light to white light and I'll show you. So what they're talking about is high noon, which is roughly about here. You can see how the light is casting a shadow on my face. And I'm trying my best to show you, but it may not show up here on the camera very well. But you can see like bags underneath my eyes from the light itself. But if I go down below, you can see it look like I'm part of the Adams family, kind of look creepy like. Not a very good flattering photo either. But what they do teach you is go for side lighting. Because what you want to do is that you want to have a highlight on one side and you want to have a shadow on another. A lot of times you want to have about a 45 degree angle to have this nice effect. And it does look a lot more flattering in a professional setting. The same can apply to product photography. When you're doing product photography, you're using the same concept of directional light. You wanna make your product look flattering. Yes, I'm using a rubber duck. It's hard to make a rubber duck flattering, but everybody loves rubber ducks, so bear with it. So with directional light, most uh, product shots is you have a key light in front of your subject which is gonna illuminate the front of your subject. And then you're gonna have a key light behind your subject, creating a kind of like a halo light around your subject. It makes your subject pop out more. But what other people would do too, is that they'll put a light on one side. And what that will do is they will create a shadow on one side. And as you can see, as I move the, the light around, the shadow creates a dynamic feel. You can do the same thing in portrait photography, landscape photography, anything that you take a photo of, you can use those dynamics to your advantage to make your subject pop out more. Or you can take the light, sh shove it up your uh, subject's bum and make them radioactive. How cool is that? 
And with light, there's different sources of where light can come from. It can come from LED lights, it can come from natural light sources like from a window or from the sun itself. It can even come from reflective sources. Now you don't need to have a reflector, but if you want to have certain soft shots, it does help. And you don't always need to buy a reflector either. You can make one. And this is what a reflector looks like. Just a piece of, you know, foil on top of uh, fabric. And this thing is gonna pop out at me like that. So if I stand over here, you can see how the reflector reflects the ring light onto the sofa. You can make one out of tin foil as well. Because that's really all this is, is a type of a foil that's reflecting light. You can use mirrors, which will cause a very harsh reflection of light. So if you want to have light that's being directed at one single point, use mirrors. But if you want to have a soft light reflection onto your subject, say on your skin, use a foil and it comes in either silver or gold. If you want to use like warming skin color tones, you want to use gold foil. But if you don't know how to make one, it's super simple. All you really need is tin foil. Tin foil and get some cardboard. And then just stick it on that cardboard with glue, tape, do whatever. And you can see if I take this big giant foil away, it can still have the same reflective property as that big giant reflector I had too. What you can also do with foil is crumple it up. I'm sure it sounds good on the microphone. And now what you're doing is that you're reflecting ray, light rays in multiple different directions. So it kind of gives a more creative look. So if you're trying to make like a interesting backdrop or if you're trying to make kind of like a water reflection, this is generally how you do it. Light can be manipulated in so many different ways there is an endless amount of possibilities for creativity when you're working with light. Now, light has a very powerful way of creating emotion in whatever you're trying to capture. It doesn't matter if it's photography or film, it creates emotion. So, for an example, if you remember some of those old mystery movies where you have a detective trying to interview a criminal, you get that spotlight that's hanging from the ceiling and a lot of times they'll knock it and it goes, back and forth, you get a ray of light going on one side and a ray of light going on the other. So you have light, shadow, shadow, light. It keeps going in this constant motion, creating suspense or kind of mystery. Or when you go to a horror film and you get the lights flickering before you get that jump scare, scared and living daylights out of you. So you get sent to the hospital because you just had a heart attack. Or go to a classic romance film and next thing you know, you've got Candlelight everywhere. Not only roses, but candlelights everywhere. Yellows and oranges flickering, soft. And they use a lot of uh, bouquet. If you don't know what bouquet is, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, but what it is is that it's a soft, out of focus background lighting. And what it looks like, and I'll try to replicate it with my camera here if I have the right type of lens somewhere. What it does is that it's, instead of having a hard light like you see right now, it becomes these balls of glow, essentially. And a lot of times you see this in romance films or you see this in a lot of media portrayal when you watch news and they do Christmas lights. They use that effect a lot to create a kind of like a cinematic look to it. It looks pretty nice. Or if you're doing portraits, it's a beautiful backdrop, especially with Christmas lights or 4th of July lights, because it's something that is pretty, but doesn't strike too much focus of distracting your subject with your background. It's a way of separating your subject with the background, but it creates this air of wonder or mysticalness because it's something you normally don't see with your normal eyes. And that's how light creates emotion because of how the style of the light is or how you use the light is what creates that emotion. You can do it in nature as well. So I have a photo of here being in the salt flats. It was high noon, a lot of overcast creating a lot of light diffusion. So everything is flat. 
but you notice that it has a lot of whites, there's a lot of blues, and there's a lot of light grays. So it creates this cool effect. And I'm talking about the temperature cool. It makes it look cool or it looks gloomy. Some people say it looks serene, looks calm. But when you go on to this next photo, which is the sunset, now you got yellows and oranges and reds. Now you got warming, romance, homeliness. You get these comfort emotions pouring in because you have all those warming temperatures. And that's just the temperature usage between the two images. You have cool and warm. They have two different emotions just from temperature alone versus light usage. There's no fancy lighting effects going on right now or fancy colors going on or even light rays or anything like that. Just basic lighting. But when you start using lighting to a different advantage and you start getting these light rays, and I have a few images of this uh, laying around, where you have light streaks coming around, now you've got something of a ethereal feel. It kind of looks like, you know, if you go with, at a spiritual sense, it kind of looks like the heavens are opening up. And to a lot of people, that's something that's very spiritually comforting. They enjoy seeing something like that. Or if you take a photo of a fire and you have those blazing red skies as if like the hell on earth itself opened up. It has that fierce emotion tied to that image. So it really does depend on how you utilize the lighting in terms of nature, even in product or portrait photography or in any sort of film. And when you're doing portrait photography, like I said, the direction of the light matters but so does the hue. If you want to have someone have a cooler temperature and you want them to stick out a little more then you would want to have a white light. But if you want to have them a kind of a, a glow up effect, you would want to have a amber, yellow, or a skin color tone lasting on one side, giving them a natural skin color look. You also kind of want to focus more on using a uh, golden hour on the sun. And if you don't know what golden hour is, it's just before the sun hits to sunset, that's when the sun gets this really bright yellow orange color. And it makes the entire landscape have this surreal golden look. And that's why it's called golden hour. And it tends to make your film or photography just that more cinematic. It makes everything much more popping out and gives everything this more warming feel. It's very enjoyable. And that is the power of how light can be used for emotion. So I hope that, you know, talking about this changes your perspective a little bit. Instead of using light as a practical standpoint, you know, using a flood, spot, and accents to make your scene pop out more. Instead, now using light as a way of conveying emotion, such as trying to keep things in a dynamic sense, maybe making things more homey, more comfortable, more approachable. So that's the general idea. In the comment section below, answer this question. How are you guys using light to convey emotion in your artwork? And what kind of emotion are you generally trying to put out towards your viewers? I like to see your responses. And you know, if you can help my channel grow a little bit, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and if you want to keep updated quickly with when I upload new videos, click the notification bell. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.